fear for him? I worry that he doesn't seem at time to understand the situation. He said the line that they are in transition. This is his third season. So I don't want him to be in denial of where this team is. Girona, Real Madrid, Atletico and them. They are the, the worst team of the four. Xavi is in a very troubling period as Barcelona manager. And I'm worried that this could spell the end of his career there altogether. Since Barca fell to Madrid on October 28th, their record is very unimpressive. Four wins, four losses, and two draws in all competitions. That's an average of 1.4 points per match. And several Barcelona managers have been fired for form much better than that. And it's not like you can chalk it all up to them just being unlucky either. Sure, maybe I'd give it to them for the loss against Madrid, especially after that last goal. But honestly, there are several problems that make me worried about this team and Xavi's job. And the most obvious of them all is that the team just cannot score at all. For the vast majority of Xavi's reign, Barcelona have not been prolific in front of goal. But you can say that especially right now. If you are following Barcelona online anywhere, I'm sure you've seen the graph showing how Barcelona are creating the most threat in the entire top five leagues, and they are just not converting any of their chances at all. Lewandowski's off for some reason, Felix can't keep his shots under the bar, and the rest of the team just cannot convert right now. However, it's not fair to put all of that on Xavi. After all, when all those guys go out on the pitch, for the most part, it's out of his hands. And to be fair, we've seen that a lot of the team's biggest goals this season have come after a short coaching session with Xavi on the sidelines. But they are few and far between, and Kules are absolutely right to call into question his starting lineup, especially the inclusion of Lewandowski, every single game. For God's sake, put the guy on the bench. Not only is he not doing what he has been praised for for the past decade, but he also puts the team in unfortunate situations with his inability to press. Pedri gets pulled out of position consistently covering for the Polish striker and has to be taken out after 70 minutes every game because the kid is so gassed. That's not a small issue either because Barcelona becomes incredibly disjointed whenever Pedri is pulled out of the midfield and are exposed defensively because they don't have a proper pivot. And that Pedri issue has shown a light to me on to one of the bigger issues in Barcelona's team right now. They're out of possession play. This is something I was initially turned on to by the purest football on Twitter, but Barcelona looked terrible out of possession. Do you remember how excited everyone was about Xavi coming back and reintroducing a strong, unbearable pressure like the one he played with in the Guardiola years? Well, that definitely does not exist right now in this team. There is barely a press at all and teams have way too much time on the ball and are able to play out of pressure very easily. And it was especially problematic because Barcelona doesn't exactly sit back well either. They don't compress well into a solid defensive shape like you would expect from a team that isn't pressing. And that's one of the reasons that it's so easy to keep the ball away from Barcelona right now, with the exception of the final 15 minutes of every single game. But I believe the reason Barcelona's out of possession problem is such a problem, but it's or it's so clear this year opposed to last year or the year before, even though they were pressing better those years, is because the defensive side of this team is not performing at all right now. For a team that had the best defensive record of any team in the world last season, they constantly look like a shadow of themselves. Koundé is not good at all right now, Araujo looks lost at the moment, and that's really all I can say because all of the other defenders are basically attackers or are hurt and not playing. Without the solidity of a pivot like Busquets and the confidence you can have in a player like that, the team is exposed and there's a lot more pressure on them, and you can really tell that with Koundé. He was phenomenal last season, and he was really, really good in the beginning of the season when Barcelona were playing well. When Barcelona played well, Koundé played well. He looked like the center back he was at Sevilla, finally, something we hadn't really seen since he signed. But honestly, he's looked god-awful for the most part. He played okay against Valencia, but he's just not himself right now. But I also have to say something about Araujo, because I made a video praising him two weeks ago, and now he isn't performing well. I guess I have some jinx or something. It happened with Gavi too. I don't want to talk about it. But there's something going on with Araujo. He's making poor decisions and he's late into tackles in a way he never really is. So something is off with him and I'm sure he will find his form again. And I'm sure Koundé will as well. But right now with all of these problems piling up on each other, it does not look good for Barcelona and therefore for Xavi's job. You cannot chalk all of these defensive issues up to Ter Stegen not being in there and Koundé and Araujo not playing well because there's a lot of positional 
mayhem going on with them when they are in defensive position. There were several instances in the past couple games where it looked like it was just a bunch of pickup guys who had never spoken to each other trying to scramble around and defend against a counterattack. It looked totally out of sorts for a team that's supposed to be one of the best defensive sides in the world. They have no coordination, sometimes look just uninspired and don't know where to be, and all of that can be put on Xavi. He needs to set this team up in a more organized way, and I don't care that they don't have a pivot. You have players that can somewhat play that position. You have Marc Casado and Frankie de Jong can cover that position even if not perfectly. Barcelona does not have a ball winner in this midfield, so the lineup and everything has to change. Maybe go back to having four midfielders in the squad. I know you might not have the depth to do that, but something has to change, but Javi doesn't seem to be changing much until the final minutes of matches every single time. But continuing the trend of having more and more problems stack on top of each other, making everything worse, Barcelona are terrible with space in front of them because there is not a single attacker in this squad that is prolific at ball progression. Rafinha is always going to cut onto his left. Ferran Torres just doesn't seem to be able to take people one-on-one. -on -one. Zhao is incredibly adept at beating players one-on-one, -on -one, but he is just too slow. And even Lamine Yamal just doesn't seem to trust himself with defenders chasing him down. But hopefully that changes in time because you can see the glimpses of the brilliance from him when he is close to the box and he all he has to do is take a player one-on-one and it doesn't necessarily rely on his speed like it would at the halfway line beating players to the box. In essence, the team desperately misses Ousmane Dembele. He offered an outlet that took a lot of pressure off of the team and off of Xavi. The team could defend hard because they knew they could throw the ball up to Dembele and let him do his thing. Sure, he would lose the ball half the time, but that threat was what made it so important. It could always have a chance at creating something special. In my opinion, Barca's only solid ball carriers right now are Balde, who's out of form, Frankie, who is really needed as the pivot right now, and Pedri, who might actually be interesting to play out wide like Gavi did last year, but Barcelona just can't afford to waste him out wide because of how necessary he is in that midfield. It's safe to say that having all of these problems stacking on top of each other, of course, Xavi's going to be in trouble. But Barcelona fans, man, are they not letting him forget it. I get it. It's easy to pressure him right now to think that a more experienced coach would have these players behaving in a better way, performing at a higher level. But I genuinely feel like this is coming out at such crazy amounts because a lot of us are scared, afraid, afraid the team is going to sink back into the trenches it came from. Xavi was supposed to change all that. And when we won the league, I think a lot of people believed we were back. And to give them credit, just look at this squad. I've said it before and I'll say it again, Barcelona can compete with any team in the world, talent-wise, even without a star striker performing and a proper pivot. They've all got something special, so it's easy to feel like Xavi has no right letting them fall down all the way to this level. But I think we all need to calm down a little bit because a new coach isn't going to change anything right now. I just don't see a new coach be it Rafa Marquez or whoever, making an immediate impact that would change the rest of the season for Barca. We might be out of the league this season and that's okay. I know it's wild to say because Barcelona always takes winning the league super seriously, but maybe this will allow Xavi and the squad to focus on winning the Champions League, something they probably haven't really focused on in a long time. When they played Real Madrid this season, I want to remind you, one of the favorites to win the Champions League, they were better than them for 70 minutes of that match. If a few minuscule moments of brilliance and a little bit of luck go slightly differently, Barcelona is winning that game. Xavi's team has been poor this season, and he doesn't deserve credit. I'm not saying give him credit for what he is doing. I'm saying to have some patience and to see what happens at the new season. Because especially with this draw of Napoli in the Champions League, I think that gives us a pretty good shot. Sure, it's early and I don't even know who we would compete against next, but I think it gives us a good chance to expose ourselves to good European competition that isn't Real Madrid and also isn't that difficult? Napoli is just not PSG, so they won't be intimidated as much as they would have been if it were PSG or even Inter Milan. Gives them a good chance to win and gain some confidence and take that momentum going forward because this team is definitely good enough to beat Napoli. But I'm pretty sure they're saying the exact same about us right now. So again, it gives us a good shot, a good challenge without being incredibly intimidated. And with the incredibly terrible confidence that Barcelona has had in the Champions League since La Rimontada, I think this is a good opportunity to build a little bit of that back up. So please have some patience with the boys. 
Give them a chance to play. You can be upset with them. That's fine. Also, I've been thinking about doing some live stream watch alongs of matches starting in January on this channel. So let me know if you would tune into that or if that's something you would be interested in at all. I obviously can't show the game itself, but I can commentate over it and I watch the games alone usually anyway. So it might be fun to watch it with some people for once. But thank you all for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.